is tidying up your sewing room, part of your 2021 plans. And if you've been sewing for a number of years, taking a good hard look at your stash will be part of it. Hiding in your stash are fabrics that you no longer want or you realize are not suitable for the quilting that you like to do. Today's guest, Kim Soper, had the same problem and has started a website to help you destash your fabrics, Feel Good Fibers. Today we are talking about the process of identifying what to sell, how to photograph it, and how to get it online. So grab your sewing and a cup of tea, and here is my interview with Kim Soper. Thank you, Kim, for showing up today. I'm so excited to talk about your website and destashing. That's one of the big questions I get asked a lot on my website. But before we get into that, let's talk about just you and how did you come to quilting? I came to quilting uh, probably about 10 years ago. Uh, I was pregnant with my second son and I had decided that I was going to be staying home um, and I wanted to do something different as a hobby and my mom purchased a sewing machine for me for Valentine's Day. And so I decided that I was going to make a quilt for the new baby when he came and I was hooked ever since. So did you take home ec in school or were there any other quilters in your life like a sewing machine was just kind of out of the blue? My mom actually does quilt. She does um, very traditional style of quilting. So it wasn't something that I ever really thought of for myself until I started looking online and um, seeing a lot of the modern quilters and the bright fabrics and more geometric types of patterns and bold patterns. And once I wanted to try that, I kind of, I guess it was kind of in my blood and uh, I started and I haven't looked back. And have you joined a guild? What is your quilting community? I am a part of the Long Island Modern Quilt Guild. And uh, I also started originally with a nice Flickr community back in the day before Instagram. And that kind of evolved into Instagram today. Um, I do a lot of my personal quilting under the handle of Leland Ave Studios. And um, so that's where you could find the things that I've been making. How long did it take before this idea for a D-Stash website percolate in your head? Did it come right away or did it percolate for a number of years? So the story is that in 2018, I did a year-long interview series with um, a different quilter each week called The Creativity Project. And the whole heart of the project was why we quilt. And after I finished that project, I started thinking about it's not only important why we quilt, but it's important how we quilt, doing it mindfully with what materials, what fabrics we choose. And that sort of started me down the idea that it would be so much easier if we all could shop from one another's stashes, the fabrics that we're not using, but that we have you know, up on a shelf. And that started percolating the idea for Feel Good Fibers. It was something that I wanted to see exist in the world beyond just the typical D-Stash hashtags. And um, in February, we opened for the first time of 2020. February 2020, right when COVID started. So that is COVID exactly when we started. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we opened and promptly uh, closed down for a couple of months because we knew that people were gonna be shipping you know, their personal fabrics. And we weren't sure at that time, even what people would be comfortable with doing if they were comfortable going to the post office. So we closed down till May and then we reopened and we've been open ever since. I noticed going through your Instagram feed, you have all sorts of wonderful tips for de-stashing, figuring out the choices of which ones to go. What are your top tips? Top tips, I mean, I kind of subscribe to the Marie Kondo method where if it no longer sparks joy, then it probably means it's time to go. Um, I kind of look at having too much fabric in your room that you're not going to use as clutter. And I think that clutter takes time because it's mental energy that you have to really deal with when there's things around that aren't helping to spark your creativity. So um, I say, if it's something that you haven't used and you really don't think that you're going to use, then put it on a D-Stash site like ours or on Instagram if that's you know more comfortable for you right now and sell it so that it can go to a new home and give somebody else joy and give you room to bring things into your creative space that actually does make you feel joyful. 
So what is the feedback on your website so far? Are people asking for more features? Is there going to be a Feel Good Fibers Part 2 or an, uh, extra pages that you need to add? So right now, we're really just trying to make people feel comfortable with the idea of using the site. There's no fees associated with using the site. Um, we're kind of helping people that aren't necessarily looking to do a large de-stash to um, recognize that you can just de-stash one or two fabrics. You don't have to be, you know, creating a separate account on Instagram and have 20, 30 fabrics that you're getting rid of. You can literally do it in real time. If you decide that something doesn't spark joy anymore, then you can go ahead and sell it and just test out, you know, selling one or two things. So that's what we focused on and um, just kind of helping people to see that we exist. We haven't really, um, had to focus on adding too many new features yet because right now we're still just focused on getting users and getting people to know about us. So now you've got a side hustle here. <laughs> How is that affecting your own personal quilting? Do you still have time? Has your aesthetic changed? Well, what's really affected my sewing time was the fact that my kids have been home since March. So <laughs> that really ate into my creative time. But today, all three of them actually went back to school for the first time since March 13th. So I'm hoping that there will be much more time for sewing. Have the kids taken up quilting? <laughs> <laughs> Have they taken up sewing? Are they interested in your hobby at all? Actually, my middle son, the one that I started quilting for in the first place, he definitely has shown some interest and he's more made stuffed animals and um, some other smaller sewing projects, but I see a budding future quilter there. <laughs> well, there's so many men coming to quilting now. It's, yeah. I think it's quite an exciting time. Mm -hmm. It's the color. <laughs> it is. And the texture. You gotta love the texture of the fabric. We live in such a great time for quilting. Like it's just going off in so many wonderful directions. There's so many amazing collections coming out now. Who's your favorite designer? Or do you have a favorite? I have to say Anna Maria Horner, only because... I feel like it was Anna Maria Horner that brought me into this wonderful world. And so I feel dedicated to her. I was using some of her fabric yesterday and thinking, oh, thank God for Anna Maria Horner. <laughs> just the, the colors and just the way that she can bring it all together. Mm -hmm. I was able to visit her shop in Nashville two years ago. Mm -hmm. and the quilts that were on the wall were just breathtaking. They are beautiful. Is your guild online now? Are you doing Zoom meetings? Are yeah. you doing Zoom workshops? Yes, uh, we haven't done any workshops yet. We're a relatively small guild, so um, you know, funding is still an issue, but for the most part, our meetings have been online since May, and um, I think for the foreseeable future, they're going to be online. What was your beginner mistake that you made when you started off that you would <laughs> recommend other beginners don't make? I did not realize when I first started sewing that half square triangles needed to be trimmed. So not only did I not square them up so that they were straight, but I didn't even realize that the dog ears needed to be taken off. So um, that was definitely in my first quilt, which I ambitiously made a very large picnic blanket and was trying to quilt on my little domestic machine with a chevron pattern where I was turning and quilting the machine underneath the needle. Um, that was definitely one of my first big mistakes. <laughs> do you still have that quilt? I do, and we still bring it to the beach. Those are wonderful quilts. What's your favorite tool? Does the rotary cutter even count? I mean, I <laughs> can't even imagine living without it. Um, I recently purchased a pair of Kai scissors. I really love them. They're very sharp and lightweight and um, yeah, they're, they're my new favorite. I got a pair of Kai scissors at QuiltCon mm -hmm. and it was almost like a license to print money. All he had to do <laughs> was cut fabric in front of people and that ASMR sound of the fabric right. being sliced. It's true, I bought mine at QuiltCon too. I probably saw the same demonstration. <laughs> I got the purple handle, the three, the three series of purple head. <laughs> See, it was a license equipment. <laughs> oh boy. I love that quilt behind you. I'm admiring it. Is that your own pattern? Yeah, this is a quilt that I made based on um, the Wheel of Fortune block. I have a small little book that has a thousand quilt blocks in it. And um, this is just one of my favorites. 
So that's where I just decided to do, um, it's 12 different colors used in different color combinations and it makes it look like there's so many more colors actually in the quilt, but um, they're just used in different combinations. So just back to your website, 2021 is almost here. And I'm sure a lot of people want to clear out some of their space, just for the reasons that you were talking about, clearing up some headspace, mm -hmm. being able to access more creativity and just getting rid of what I often call beginner mistakes. Like you, so many fabrics we buy when we're first starting off and we really don't even know our own design aesthetic. And it's that time to say goodbye, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're gonna move on. Um, so what's, what's the first step that they need to do with your website? So the very first step would be to sign up for an account and pick a store name for um, how they're going to sell. That would be either their account name or their store handle for when they do want to destash. And then um, for the process of destashing, we call it the six P's of destashing. And basically, you know, there's photography, pricing, there's, uh, we say personality, which is where you describe the fabric that you're selling. Um, there's packaging, there's promoting and posting, which is taking it to the post office. So those are basically the steps to getting an item, you know, listed with all the information that you need. And our frequently asked questions walk you through the entire process. Um, and my husband and I are always available by email. If anybody has questions, we get back to everybody right away. I think that probably the big question will be pricing. How do they know how valuable it is? Let's say it's a blue polka dot half yard piece of fabric. Do you have any guidelines for how to price it? Do you price it what current prices are? Do you price it for what you think you bought it for? Or is there an expectation that there's a discount on it? And those are all really great questions. The way that we kind of look at pricing is that your fabric is really only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. And a lot of times um, we might attach emotion to a piece of fabric that we purchased because of the memories of who we were with when we bought it, why we bought it, what drew us to it in the first place. So there is sometimes getting over that hurdle of knowing that maybe your fabric isn't worth as much as it was worth when you paid for it or what you think it might be worth. That said, it's up to you what you want to list your fabric with. You can either do some research and you know list it competitively based on other people that are selling that same piece of fabric, or you can list it for what you think you'd like to get. It might sit a little bit longer on the site, but it can stay as long as you want. If you're looking to get rid of it quickly, you might price it a little bit lower so that it moves quicker. There's really no right answer. There are certain designers that are more well-known that sell quickly, Tula, being among them. We, we've seen some things move after six months. So it really just depends on what your expectation is and what you want to get out of the process. Do you sell fabrics one at a time? Can you make your own fat quarter bundles? Can you sell it as a lot? Can you do it any of those? Any of the above. You can list fat quarters, you could list yardage, you can create your own bundle and, you know, almost like you're your own fabric store and, you know, sell it to people and they might see things in a way that they've never seen it before and be really excited by the bundles that you curate. Um, we do scrap lots. Uh, there any way that you want to list the fabric. There's, there's different categories that you can select and you put that into the description to let people know. You talk about photography. Obviously, the nicer the fabric looks, the more attractive it will be to the purchaser. Do you have yeah. some guidelines or tutorials or we have, fabric photography? Uh, a couple of articles with tips on our website about um, you know how to photograph your fabrics. I would say that the most important thing is that it's taken in a well-lit space so that people can see an accurate depiction of the fabric, um, usually on a plain background, a white background, or like a plain table works best because it doesn't distract from the pattern. Really lighting is just the most important thing. You know, natural light works way better than, you know, the light from the ceiling that has a yellow tint to it. But Editing is your friend, and if you're not able to take pictures during the daylight or next to a window, you can always use the editing tools on your computer or phone to alter the image to make it look as good as possible. So it's truly just as easy as taking pictures with your smartphone and uploading them. Yes. You don't need exactly. a fancy camera. You don't need fancy no. equipment. No. Just put them nicely beside an open window, take that daylight, exactly. and off you go. Exactly. 
Now the last part, postage. Who pays for postage? So when we had first launched, we were doing shipping separately from the fabric price itself. And we realized that seeing the price of shipping was a barrier for shoppers. So now what we've encouraged our listers to do is to include the price of shipping with their item. Now, of course, the price of shipping can vary if you're not using flat rate shipping based on where you're shipping to. So what we kind of tell people to do is take an estimate of the shipping costs and it might end up being a little bit higher or a little bit lower, but they build that right into the price of the fabric so that when customers go to check out, there is no shipping fee. It's amazing how, <laughs> how that is a barrier. <laughs> I, I think we've all been on a website where they, they're like, oh, you've got three more dollars before you hit the free shipping. And of course you end up spending probably 20, 30 more dollars just it's to get so that true. free shipping. <laughs> So true. Right now, you're just in the continental USA or all of the USA? Continental USA. Okay. And you're working on international or Canada? We are hoping to expand in the future. Right now, the shipping is a huge part of it, you know, figuring out how people would be able to estimate costs for international shipping, given that they do include that in the price of the fabric when they list. We're still working out how we can make that happen, but we are hoping to expand to Canada soon. I wonder if you could even just have somebody self-identify as Canadian and another Canadian could buy from another Canadian. Right, right. That's definitely something that we're considering, yes. Yeah, yeah. well, that sounds like a great idea. I know personally I have too much fabric, but I can't come to say goodbye to any of it yet, but I'm wanting to... <laughs> clean up my space this year. So I'm hoping that I will take advantage of some of your, now I'm in Canada, but so I'll have to work around that, but I do have to de-stash too. What are your plans for 2021 as a quilter, as a business owner? We're going into a whole new world here, still living with COVID. Do you have any quilts on your to-do list? Do you have any expansion of your your company that's on your to-do list? Well, as far as quilts on the to-do list, there's always many quilts on the to-do list, but um, the one quilt that I do have that I'm really excited to work on is um, a collaborative quilt with uh, Megan Collins. Uh, she's a pattern designer in Houston, and we've met at QuiltCon, and now we're planning on doing a traveling quilt between the two of us that is kind of representative of both of us, but in some way kind of comes together and represents our friendship. So that's something that I'm really excited to work on. As far as the business, um, we're really just looking to continue to grow and get the word out about our mission and continue to provide like great content that talks about issues like sustainability, self-care, mindfulness, how that all fits into our creative practice. And we also like to have fun. We do lots of giveaways and playlists on the weekend. So really we're just looking to continue to expand and continue to do that and bring positivity to the quilt world. You touched upon mental health and mental health is just so important. I know we're all carrying an extra burden with COVID and I know the New York area, your area was pretty hard hit during this year. What are the steps that you do to help keep things running on an even keel, juggling a family, juggling a business? I know how challenging that is. It's definitely been an unusual year. I can say that for sure. I mean, I really do practice what I preach. I am a huge believer in decluttering and keeping my environment as clear as possible so that I can think straight and so that I can be the best version of myself that I can. We have a 10 minute tidy almost every single day. The kids help out. They know, you know, one cleans the shoes up and one puts the papers in a pile and we all work together and it gets done quickly. So that's definitely one of my tactics. Um, another is that, you know, when I know that I don't have the time to do something special for myself, I try to work that into my regular routine. So whether that's lighting some incense or just planting my feet firmly on the ground and taking some deep breaths before I head to my computer or my sewing machine, that's what I do. And I mean, it's little things like that that really do help. Sometimes I'll put essential oils in a diffuser and just breathe it in but just little things, really. Your quilting must fill your bucket. 
but are there stages in the in the quilting that you find hard to get beyond? Uh, I mean, I think most people will agree with me. Basting is <laughs> really rough. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I have quite a few of those uh, flimsy quilt tops sitting in a pile behind me. So <laughs> I, I adore hand stitching binding, but putting the binding on is really a deterrent. So th those I'd say basting and attaching the binding before I hand stitch it down are my two least favorite parts of the process. Well, I thank you very much for being with me today. I really appreciate your time. This is just wonderful. I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing this with everyone. And they can find you at? They can find us at Feel Good Fibers at Instagram and feelgoodfibers.com. And you can also find my personal work at Leland Ave Studios and lelandavestudios.com. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me. I am at the point where destashing is part of my future and I will definitely be using some of her tips. I'll leave Kim's contact information below as well as directions to Feel Good Fiber website. And for those of you who are building a stash, her website might be where you find those older fabrics that you can no longer find in quilt shops. Next up on Karen's Quilt Circle is the one and only Mary Fonz. And there's no one better to talk to about quilting legacies. You don't want to miss it, so be sure to subscribe to my channel. Last week, I did a live stream about making this cute ornament, and I'll leave a link in the description below to the directions in the supply list. And check out some of my other interviews on Karen's Quilt Circle as well. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell beside the subscribe button so that YouTube will notify you when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilts. And of course, subscribe to my newsletter at JustGetItDoneQuilts.com. So take care, and I'll see you next time.